This will be my review of the ASUS UX305. I have a full unboxing video uh, of this, which you can uh, watch by the annotation on by clicking on the annotations on the screen now. But I've been using this uh, UX305 uh, notebook for quite a few months now, and over that time I've used it for web browsing, listening to music, watching YouTube videos and live streams, editing documents, some light gaming, uh, and at no point over the past, past few months has it let me down, and I found it more than up to the task of what I was throwing at it. So let's delve into the review and find out why. Let's talk about hardware. Now, a lot of people in the general tech community seem to think that the UX305 and other similar Intel Core M uh, laptops are nothing more than overqualified tablets or smartphones, and that Core M has no real processing power. That's simply not true, and those people are dead wrong and are either lying or have no idea what they're talking about. Don't let people convince you that Core M equals poor performance because it's not true. Is the Intel Core M lineup the same performance level as a mobile quad core i7? No, but it's not supposed to be, nor does it need to be. The Intel Core M CPU lineup, in particular the Core M5 by 10 in this in my particular SUSE UX305, is more than powerful for everyday home or business use, and it's far more powerful than uh, it might seem, and far more powerful than people give it credit for. Though it may have an 800 megahertz stock clock speed, but when it needs the extra CPU power, the CPU easily turbos and overclocks itself up to 1.62 GHz, no problem. The Core M5Y10 in this particular version is more powerful than the Core 2 Duo CPUs you used to get on mid-range to high-end laptops four or five years ago. But now, you have that same performance in a much smaller form factor and with a much longer battery life. Also, most tasks don't require much CPU power, as long as it's not 3D or video rendering or AAA 3D gaming, the Core M and the UX305 can handle that no problem. If you think about buying an ASUS UX305, which if you're watching this video you probably are, uh, I would however stress the importance of choosing an 8GB model over the 4GB versions. The RAM on this notebook is soldered onto the motherboard and cannot be upgraded, so whatever memory configuration you choose you will be stuck with. However, you can upgrade the storage, so if you choose to get an 8GB version with 128GB M.2 SSD, you can upgrade that SSD to 512 gigs or potentially more in the future, just so you know. Even with a few Chrome tabs open and a few background applications running, this will easily use 3GB plus of RAM, and much more when programs are running. Perhaps if you're a very light user and only ever have one browser tab open at a time, the 4GB version of the UX305 might be enough for you, but you'll probably find in a few years that 4GB isn't, just isn't enough for your needs. But let's move on to the other hardware that's built into this notebook. Uh, the webcam at the top there is 720p, but it's very grainy when you're indoors, even with very bright fluoro lights. Uh, I found that using the webcam outdoors in a, or another similar sort of bright environment yields the best image quality. Uh, so that's just something to take note of um, if webcam quality is important to you. The microphone in the UX35, which is up here above the keyboard, isn't amazing. I mean, it does get the, the, the job done, but uh, do note because of its, its placement above the keyboard area, it will easily pick up, you know, keystrokes and, and touchpad sounds, uh, etc. And the UX35 does have a four-pole headphone jack on the right side of the device that has headphone microphone functionality, so... Uh, you can use pretty much any um, smartphone, IEM, or earphones with a built-in mic and use that with probably no real issues. Uh, speaking of audio quality, let's move on to the speakers which are contained on these sides of the laptop under here. They are downwards firing speakers. Now let me start off by saying that these are laptop speakers, through and through. As much as ASUS might want to tout them as the most amazing speakers they've ever put on a laptop, and they're, they're probably not, they're laptop speakers. The sound does distort, as to be expected with laptop speakers, when at high volume, and, they, but, and can be quite quiet, uh, depending on what audio settings you have and what volume settings you have. You might have to use the chilies, which I'll get into. Uh, there are two applications that allow you to control sound output and settings. So if I log in, I can show you those. So there's two applications that allows you to control um, audio settings. One is uh, just a general EQ application control, and it's called uh, Smart Audio, and you can access that going through Control Panel. Also, uh, note I have, have I do have um, 
classic start install to get back the original start menu. Uh, so Smart Audio is access and control panel, and often it will become buried under various other windows, um, which can make it uh, difficult to find. Um, and it gives you basic you know, EQ control and uh, audio settings and so on and so forth. Uh, it will, and as well as you know, fixed modes and, and various other things. It also has a functionality called night mode, which can increase the audio volume quite significantly, but it, it does definitely distort the uh, sound though. Uh, the next utility that uh, is used for the sound is called Ice Power Audio Wizard, which is under in that category, and it comes up with this. Now, as far as I can tell, it's basically just an amplifier utility. It comes with six preset options, as you can see on, on the screen, um, but they can't be changed or edited in any way. There's music mode, which is already selected, uh, which was on by default for me originally when I got it out of the box. Uh, movie mode, recording mode, gaming mode, and speech mode as well as off. Uh, music mode prefer, um, preserves the sound quality the best, uh, I think. Um, and probably the next to that is probably the gaming mode. Um, or movie mode. Uh, recording and speech mode just sound muffled and too heavily filtered to make you know any reasonable use. Oh, and obviously you wouldn't want to use that for you know music or general audio playback. I'd recommend generally leaving it on music mode, but if you want it a little bit louder then gaming mode and then or maybe movie mode um, if you're okay with that. Uh, the Wi-Fi uh, in this model is very fast. My version of the ASUS uh, UX305 comes with the uh, Intel AC7265 uh, uh, Wi-Fi module um, that supports Edo 211 AC Wi-Fi. I personally don't have a wireless AC access point, uh, but when using wireless N, I can easily get over 100 megabits per second when I'm next to my wireless access point. And I can get very good coverage, you know, quite a few meters away uh, through a few walls. It is worth noting that some variants of the UX305, particularly some North American versions, only come with a wireless N uh, Wi-Fi card, not a wireless AC. So your Wi-Fi performance may differ in that case. Let's move on to the display. Now, my particular model of the UX305, specifically the UX305 FA, FC004P, you can learn more about the information about that product model number in my unboxing video. Uh, it comes with a... 1080p non-touch IPS display. Uh, it's also the UX305 is also available in a Quad HD Plus model, which has a 3200 by 1800 resolution, so double 900p or 1600 by 900. Personally, I have no issues and complaints with the 1080p screen on the UX305. It's very bright at the moment. I've got the brightness quite low, so the camera can sort of see what's on the screen. Um, but this is sort of minimum brightness. There is also an auto brightness function using the function key control. That, the, that bases the uh, and limits the brightness based on the light in its room. The uh, light sensors are up at the top near the webcam. So with the light sensor off, that's the maximum brightness. As you can see, it's thrown the exposure out on the uh, camera quite badly. It doesn't look like that in real life. It looks quite bright. When I use it outdoors, it's still very easy to see, and it being a matte screen means it's um, even easier to, to use when outdoors because there's no real glossy reflections. Another bad, uh, bonus, in uh, my opinion. If we put auto brightness on, it will... Uh, just to the uh, room light and then I can uh, just reduce it a bit more so the you and the uh, camera can see a little bit better but I have no real issues with the screen um, at all uh, color reproduction is very good it's on par with the other IPS monitors I own that I use on my desktop and I'm really quite happy with the uh, color reproduction from this display and the viewing angles uh, I have personally um, for I've used the Dell XPS 13 2015 3200 by 1800 Quad HD Plus model, and even though having briefly used it, I would find it quite difficult to recommend the Quad HD version of the UX305 due to the significant reduction in battery life, as you can re uh, hear about more in my unboxing video, and uh, as well as with the UI scaling weirdness and issues um, associated with the resolution that's that high. Um, it, it just does, the applications don't scale correctly because they are designed for regular display um, sizes. So that is still a present issue. At uh, 1080p, I think that the screen size is more than enough. Um, you know, with sort of resolution, this sort of screen is more than enough. Text is very, text is very crisp and, and clear, and programs and UI elements uh, scale much better um, at this sort of a resolution because it's only 1080p. Um, and, you know, with that sort of pixel density, it's 
still very nice to, to use. Brightness is still quite high. Another thing with having a high pixel density is it takes a lot more uh, light to get the same amount of brightness through the display because of the pixel density. I personally have the uh, Windows UI scaling set to 125%, and I find that you know a good balance between you know uh, density of of applications and general resolution that's usable. So physical device observations, what's it actually like to use the ASUS UX305? While it's very lightweight and very strong, uh, you can easily lift up the device by the corner of the screen with no flex whatsoever, as I just demonstrated there. Uh, the entire body uh, construction of the notebook is very good. Uh, there's no real, um, you know, sort of loose hinges or connections or anything. It's, hold, it's held together um, quite well, quite strong, because it is an aluminium uh, unibody that does also help with the uh, cooling as well. Uh, the only real complaint I have is that it picks up fingerprints uh, and various of the finger marks quite easily, even on the wrist rest and particularly the lid. Uh, the UX305 is available in two other variants. An extra one has been added, uh, both a white uh, and a new gold model, which uh, has been revealed recently, at least at the time of recording, uh, obviously to compete with the uh, offerings that are available for the new MacBook 2015. Um, based on the pictures I've seen, uh, that neither of those have a brushed spun um, metal lid like this does, as you can sort of see the shine there. Um, so it would uh, likely make it a lot less um, of a fingerprint uh, magnet than uh, this particular version is. Uh, but it is fairly easy to keep the device looking clean if you, you know, push at it and do keep it clean. They do include a cleaning cloth, which is actually... Um, Pretty good at removing the fingerprint marks, particularly on the lid. Uh, it, the cloth has some uh, sort of grooves in it that allow it to really get into the spun metal lid and clean out those fingerprints. If anything that's a bit more stubborn, just a slight damp cloth and a, uh, uh, in cleaning in concentric circles and then a dry cloth will clean it up pretty well. The keyboard is very nice for a device of this size and, and form factor and absolutely runs rings around the uh, new MacBook 2015 uh, keyboard which is also into a Core M device. Uh, there are no words to describe how awful the MacBook 2015 keyboard is. There is literally, basically, no travel distance to the keys whatsoever. And it, it's probably more similar to typing experience of a Microsoft Surface Touch Cover, but it feels worse because it looks like the keys should move somewhere, but they don't. It's, it's, it's just horrid. There's more travel distance on a button or a key, on like a home button of a smartphone or an iPhone, iPhone for example, or an iPad. Um, by comparison, the keyboard on the uh, UX305, uh, though not backlit like the MacBooks is, uh, has very nice amount of key travel distance, which makes it very satisfying to type on. The key stiffness is also uh, quite good as well. It's not so little that you accidentally you know, mispress a key, but you know, not so hard that it's you know, tiresome and uncomfortable to use. Overall, I quite like the keyboard on the UX305. Uh, the US layout model, at least, has quite a good layout with appropriate size shift keys and a very nice uh, large spacebar. Let's move on to the touchpad. I found the trackpad on the US UX305 to be very accurate and responsive with uh, general mouse movements and gestures. Um, like I mentioned in my unboxing video, the left and right mouse clicks are quite audible. And, you know, that may put some people off. If you think it might, don't worry. Uh, the touchpad supports both left and right uh, gestures uh, through a single finger tap and a double finger tap and as well as pinch to zoom and uh, double finger scrolling and various other gestures. Um, but I do think that the touchpad on the Dell XPS 13 2015 is nicer to use. It has a, a much better uh, finish on the trackpad and is, is also, in my opinion, better than the MacBook 2015 trackpad. I prefer the travel distance um, of actually having physical left and right click buttons than the haptic feedback that's on the MacBook 2015 touchpad. Also, the touchpad surface on the MacBook is really nothing special um, in comparison to the Dell XPS 13 2015 touchpad. It's, that one uh, comes out ahead by miles, and there's really no competition there. It is very enjoyable, very satisfying touchpad to use on the Dell XPS. Very smooth, um, very nice experience. I highly recommend you go in a store and check it out. Of course, your preferences may be different. So again, I would you know, recommend checking them out uh, in stores. Um, if you can find the UX305 in a store, if you can find the MacBook 2015, Dell XPS, etc. Or even other similar SUSE laptops like the UX303, perhaps, uh, or 301. Other things I've noticed about the UX305 physical design and structure is that when the screen is open greater than 90 degrees, like it is now, 
The rubber feet at the back allow the surface of the device to be pushed around. This is particularly annoying when plugging in USB flash drives um, into the device. Um, when the screen um, is less than 90 degrees, it doesn't have that problem. And the way I believe they've done this deliberately because there are risers on the back of the display uh, that, when opened up at 90 degrees, lift up the keyboard, as you might be able to see when I close the lid. It rises up the keyboard ever so slightly. Presumably, this is better to, uh, to make it a better typing experience. But as those supports have no anti slip coating, uh, all it does is allow the back of the device to be pushed around. So that's a bit of an oversight there. Um, again, when it's you know, when the lid's closed or it's less than 90 degrees or it's just sitting on the table, um, it's not really going to get pushed around because the rubber feet actually touch the table or surface. So let's move on to browsers and video playback. Um, I've got Chrome and Firefox and IE installed on this device, so pretty much all of them. Um, now, let's talk about browser um, uh, and video playback, specifically with HD video. Now, you might be surprised to find, in notes Coram, that uh, the US305 is capable of playing back 4K 60fps video, or 2160p Ultra HD. Most people call it 4K. So I've got the Big Buck Bunny uh, 4K demo, which I can uh, load up here. So Big Buck Bunny 2160p, 60fps normal, but MP4. And I can maximize this video. And it's playing back. Flawlessly, no problems, very low CPU load, it's in uh, 10 to 20% range. Probably should turn that down, but as you can see, it's playing quite smoothly in the background. Um, oddly, VLC will only do 4K 30fps video for some reason. Presumably, it's the um, hardware acceleration isn't quite designed to deal with the newer Core M platform uh, quite as well. Uh, which is really quite odd, although that may change in time, but it hasn't over the length of time I've been using the device. Uh, as for browser performance, I can easily watch um, 60fps HD Twitch streams and YouTube videos, although I have a lot lower CPU utilization watching them in Internet Explorer, um, which, you know, go, go figure, I guess, as opposed to watching them in Chrome or Firefox. It is also worth noting that Chrome or Firefox can't manage to play back Ultra HD 4K YouTube videos um, at all. Internet Explorer on the hand has absolutely no problem whatsoever and can do it with significantly less CPU load. I don't think this speaks to a problem with the hardware of the UX305, more the inefficient nature of Google Chrome and Firefox. This may improve with time as hardware optimizations get rolled out and Chrome gets a bit more efficient, um, but it hasn't thus far. So maybe if you want to watch uh, 4K um, you know, YouTube videos, then I guess you're probably going to have to use Internet Explorer or maybe find a different fork of Chromium or another sort of browser to use. Let's move on to system benchmarks and performance. Now I've tested the UX305 in a variety of different benchmark tools and games. Now let's start with the raw processing power and performance test with Cinebench R15. Now Cinebench is a really good tool for measuring processor and graphics performance. It measures both multi-core and single core performance. This is a dual core processor with hyperthreading. It also measures GPU performance. So you can really compare apples to apples, no pun intended. The UX305 and the, and the Intel Core M5 by 10 in this particular version, in the Cinebench multi-core test scored 209, which puts us on the same level as an ultra low voltage third generation Intel Core i5. For single perform core performance, it achieved a score of 82, and for graphics test, it scored 24.47 FPS. Quite respectable, considering the, that this is a passively cooled device with not a single fan. Next test is 3 Mark 11. Now, this is a very performance-intensive benchmark, even on high-end desktop PCs. So, performance numbers here aren't going to be very impressive, but I still think it's a useful test to run nonetheless. In 3D Mark 11 performance mode at 720p, the UX305 achieved a score of 1045. Now, what's worth noting is on the original launch BIOS, the factory BIOS that came with this device, that score was much lower at 649. The BIOS uh, versions 207 and 210, which have been released uh, on ASUS's website, unlocked the CPU thermal limit quite a bit. So, those BIOS versions, uh, the CPU in the UX305 can run at a much higher clock speed and performance. Uh, for longer without throttling and, and um, cutting back its performance capability. 
If you have an ASUS UX35, make sure you download the latest BIOS driver and software updates from the ASUS website as you will probably find that they will improve performance quite a bit. It is also worth noting that these benchmark scores were all taken with the 210 BIOS. I haven't personally noticed any performance difference between 207 and 210, but the 210 or potentially newer, depending on when you're watching this, should be available, so make sure you download those. The next test is the Windows Experience Index Test, or WEI score. Now this was removed from Windows 8.1 update, um, and it used to be uh, a viewable in uh, system properties. So if I go into computer and then system properties here, it used to be on this screen here where it has like Windows 8.1 and then your OEM info. Here the score used to be on that part of the screen, but they removed it in the Windows 8.1 update for some particular reason, probably because it's not exactly very representative of, of the performance capability, but it's just an interesting metric that I thought I would include. Now I used third-party software to um, do this test called WinAero WEI. Um, so for the CPU, the UX305 achieved a score of 6.9, a RAM score of 7.3, and again it is worth noting that this is an 8-gig model. Uh, for the graphics, it achieved a score of 5.3, desktop graphics score was 5.5, hard disk test was 8.1. That's obviously been helped there by the SanDisk uh, M.2 SSD. But while the Windows Experience Index scores have never really been a good indicator of performance, sort of like I said, um, it does give you a general idea of what sort of performance you could expect from the UX305, particularly if you compare those scores from laptops and other devices you already own. Now on to gaming benchmarks. Now, like I said, the UX305 isn't designed for AAA 4K gaming or even AAA 1080p gaming at 60 FPS, but it is capable of playing older AAA games and less visually complex 3D games. I've tested the following games from my Steam library, Invisible Ink, Don't Starve, Portal 2, Banished. So let's start with Invisible Ink. Invisible Ink is a, a turn-based stealth strategy game uh, that was recently released on uh, Steam. It has sort of a cyberpunk uh, theme. It shares some similarities to some of the XCOM games. Um, with all the uh, visual effects and everything on high at 1080p, the minimum frame rate in Visible Ink was 33 FPS, and the maximum frame rate was around 55 with an average of 40 to 45 FPS. The next game is Don't Starve. Now, Don't Starve is a very popular sandbox crafting adventure survival game. It's a very unique visual style, um, and it's not exactly very taxing to run, but it is still quite a nice game to look at. Uh, in Don't Starve at 1080p, with all the visual options enabled, the minimum frame rate was 40 FPS, the maximum was 60, as the game is locked at 60 FPS, and it had an average of 54. Now, Ghost Dove runs really well on the UX35, and it looks really good um, because of the high pixel density 1080p IPS display. It makes it really enjoyable and a real pleasure to play. The next game on the list is Sid Meier's Civilization V. Civ V is a 4x civilization building turn based strategy game. For my tests, I ran Civ V at 1600 by 900 resolution, partially for better UI scaling and slightly improved performance. Uh, on medium low settings, with no AA, as you can see on the screen now, uh, the minimum frame rate was 24 FPS, the maximum frame rate was 54, and an average of about 42 FPS. I found this very playable, and the game looks quite nice as well. If you drop the settings much lower, particularly on the terrain quality settings, it looks much, much worse, um, but it does give you a higher frame rate. In my experience, I could happily play a single-player Civ game like this, but if you are playing multiplayer with simultaneous turns, you might want to lower your settings a bit to ensure that you aren't at a disadvantage. The next game on the benchmark list is Portal 2. Portal 2 is a first-person sci-fi puzzle game. It also has co-op play. Now, I tested Portal 2 quite extensively on various different settings, uh, and though these numbers are specific to Portal 2, you could probably expect to see similar performance numbers from other Source Engine games, particularly older ones like Counter-Strike Source, maybe even Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which is slightly newer, uh, and the original Portal and G mod or Gary's mod, you'd expect similar performance as well. I originally started out testing Portal 2 at 720p on high details with no anti-aliasing. Um, no AA was enabled at all through these tests. On those settings, I achieved a minimum frame rate of 42 FPS, a maximum frame rate of 115, and an average frame rate of 60 FPS. Very playable if you ask me. I also tested 720p on low settings with no AA. The minimum frame rate was about 40 FPS. Maximum was 184 with an average of 77. I also tested Portal 2 at 1080p just to see how high it could go. So at 1080p on low settings, no anti-aliasing, the minimum frame rate was 33, the maximum frame rate was 107 with an average of 47 FPS. If you were to run the game on 
settings any higher than that, you would see the frame rate drop below 30 FPS, which is in the unplayable territory for a fast-paced um, game like Portal 2. Another important thing to note uh, is how game performance changes when the CPU is at high temperature. Above around 85 degrees, the CPU thermally throttles itself and reduces its performance to keep the hardware in a safe operational temperature range. Uh, in Portal 2 at 1080p on low settings, the CPU having thermally throttled itself, the minimum FPS was 25, the maximum frame rate was 77, and an average of about 37 FPS. Uh, on average, the frame rate, uh, on the average frame rate, it's about a 10 FPS drop over the previous test uh, due to the thermal throttling, and is another reason why I recommend running Portal 2 at 720p on low or high with either a 30 FPS or 60 FPS frame rate cap, depending on what you prefer. Uh, if you live in a colder climate, colder than I do, and your room temperature is less than about 24 to 25 degrees Celsius, or you have a notebook cooler that you use, then it shouldn't really be a significant issue. Uh, even though Portal 2 at 720p on high or low, um, with no anti-aliasing, looks quite good on this 13-inch uh, 1080p IPS display. Now, at the moment, the CPU uh, in real temp is running at 30 degrees. Now, the uh, based on my little... Uh, Thermal gun here, the table temperature is 21 degrees, and that's probably about the room temperature now as well. So the system is running about 32 in a 25 degree room environment. I find it sits about 38, 40 degrees. Um, the sort of hot areas of the device are obviously back here. So as you can see uh, near where the CPU is and the exhaust is, about 26 degrees. Now, up where, you see, where you're typing uh, and around the wrist resting keyboard um, is a lot cooler at about 22 uh, to 23 degrees. So where you're typing, um, it doesn't get... Are particularly too hot. At the bottom of the device, particularly under load, can get quite warm uh, into your mid 30s to uh, low 40s. Um, you can sort of get that 38 degrees up towards the top here. And again, that is under uh, full uh, load. So just keep that in mind and make sure you've got some pants on if you've got this resting on your lap. So now onto the next uh, part of the performance tests. Now, uh, the next and final game on the list is Banished. Now, Banished is a strategy city builder survival game. Uh, it's an indie game that was made by a single man, and it was released as uh, released early 2014. Uh, in Banished, at 1080p on medium low settings with no anti-aliasing. Minimum frame rate was 38 FPS. Maximum frame rate was 60 FPS, and the average was about 50. Banished at 1080p on the highest settings with no AA. The minimum frame rate was 24 FPS, and the maximum was 35 and the average was around 28 FPS. The main thing that affects performance in Banished um, are shadow quality and reflections, and this is largely true of, of most other games as well, and particularly in Civ, the shadow settings also affect the performance quite extensively. Obviously, you can play uh, more simple uh, 3D and 2D games that are more simpler than those, uh, things like FTL, uh, Papers, Please, Prison Architect, etc., uh, as for any games you can't run, the UX305 works quite well with Valve's in-home streaming. Again, it can play 4K 60fps video, so obviously you're going to be able to handle in-home streaming no problem. So if you want to play a game on the UX305 that you can't otherwise run, uh, you can stream it um, from a more powerful PC uh, in your house via your local network. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm really quite impressed with the ASUS UX305. It's really a great thin light notebook, even so for the money, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. It's got fantastic amount of I.O., it's got three USB 3 ports, unlike the MacBook 2015, which only has one USB Type-C, headphone jack, SD card reader, upgradable M.2 SSD, uh, it comes in a 13.3 inch 1080p display and Quad HD display if you particularly want that. Really fantastic um, device for the money. If perhaps you want something with a little bit more power, but with a similar feature set and design to the UX305, then perhaps the Asus UX303 is a better option for you, or maybe even the UX301, um, or 302, depending on what region you're in. Uh, those are available with Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 CPUs, and the 303 is available with the GeForce GT 840M a dedicated GPU, rather than the Intel HD Graphics 5300 that's built into this. Uh, alternatively, the Dell XPS 13 2015 is also a very good device. It does cost significantly more, though, uh, and that's particularly if you want to get the 8 gig model again, which I would highly, highly recommend. Uh, if you think about purchasing the SUSE UX305 and found this review and all the unboxing helpful, why not give this video a like and that other one a like? Uh, that would be very much appreciated. And thanks for watching.